everybody, and welcome to the Millennial Revolt, an independent political talk show that seeks to bring a different narrative than the stale one we have going on right now in the mainstream media. So today we're going to be talking about the Donald Trump Foundation, we're going to be talking about Donald Trump's many businesses and why he needs to separate himself from these businesses and hand them over to his kids or put them in a blind trust, whatever he intends to do before he gets inaugurated in less than 60 days. So there are so much to discuss, so let's just get right into it. First thing that we're going to be talking about is the Donald Trump Foundation, and it has recently admitted to the IRS that it violated a legal ban against self-dealing. Now, self-dealing de prohibits nonprofit leaders from using their charities money to help themselves, their businesses, or their families. And the reason why this is so important that we discuss this is because a lot was made during the presidential election of Hillary Clinton while she was at the State Department and the, her dealings with the Clinton Foundation and a lot of evidence showing pay to play. Now, this is very important that we hold Donald Trump to the same standards that we would hold Democratic leaders who engage in this type of behavior because he is going to be the most powerful person in the world, the president, in less than 60 days. So according to the Washington Post, the IRS tax filings from 2015 uploaded by Trump's foundations law firm Morgan Lewis and Bacchus revealed that the foundation checked yes in the box which asked if it had transferred income or assets to a disqualified person. Jackie Interline from Guideline which posted the IRS findings online, stated that the new tax filings was uploaded by a representative from Morgan Lewis and Boxness LLP, apologies if I botched that name, directly onto the foundation's GuideStar nonprofit profile on November 18th. She said, we allow organizations to submit their 990s voluntarily because sometimes the forms route through the IRS causes a delay before we get the official filed version. We do, we do that in good faith that the version they upload onto GuideStar is identical to the version they submit to the IRS. Now, the IRS manual states a transaction in which a disqualified person is enmeshed bears importantly upon the treatment and status of exempt organizations as private foundations in several situations. President-elect Trump has been under heavy scrutiny in recent months for using tax-exempt foundation money to pay for personal expenses such as legal settlements with governments and personal expenses expenses, including a painting of himself. The IRS potentially could also seek penalties against the directors of the foundation, who include Donald Trump and his three children, for allowing such a transaction to take place. However, attorneys for charitable organizations often are able to negotiate lower penalties than those proposed by the IRS. The foundation's new admission could potentially result in a separate penalties by state agencies that oversee the nonprofit. New York Attorney General Eric Schneidman has been conducting an examination of filings submitted by the Trump's charitable organization. The investigation is continuing, Schneidman's press secretary said on Tuesday. Schneidman last month ordered the foundation to cease any fundraising in New York, saying that the charity had not filed the required registration with his office. The New York official also demanded and received written confirmation that the foundation would, play, would pay no part of the $25 million settlement reached last week over fraud allegations against Trump University, the now defunct real estate training program created by the president-elect Trump. The 2015 tax filings showed the tr that Trump's company donated $566,370 to the foundation last year, while it received another $50,000 from Trump's production, Productions LLC. It's possible that these contributions came from Donald Trump himself because they listed the donations as coming from a person. These contributions are the first that Trump or his companies have made to Trump's own charity since 2008. His foundation's tax returns from 2008 show a $30,000 contribution from John Donald J. Trump 
Trump care of the Trump Organization. The foundation's new filings also show that the nonprofit received $150,000 from the British office of the foundation, run by UK- Ukrainian billionaire Viktor Punkik, who's own four Ukrainian television stations and a variety of industrial companies. Punkik, apologies if I pronounce his last name wrong, and his foundations were donor donors to the foundation run by former President Bill Clinton and his wife, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. President-elect Trump is also the first major party presidential candidate in 40 years to refuse to release his tax returns. Trump's private foundation is relatively small compared to other large nonprofits. Its total expenditures were less than $1 million in 2015 and less than 1% of the expenditures of the Bill, Hillary, and Chelsea Clinton Foundation. The foundation is a tiny piece of Mr. Trump's financial network, which includes branding deals around the globe, golf courses, and Manhattan real estate. Those business ties are fueling concerns about the conflict of interest with his due as president. Mr. Trump has said that he will give control of his businesses to his children, but he could still take official actions that would benefit himself because conflict of interest laws don't apply to the president. President-elect Trump will enter the White House with more potential conflicts of interest and less transparency about his finances than any recent president. The president-elect's influence over trade policy, taxes, government contracts, and foreign relations present countless opportunities for him to benefit his own businesses. Donald Trump last week met with three Indian businessmen who are building a luxury apartment complex under the Trump brand near Mumbai. A picture posted on Twitter shows the group smiling with their fists in a thumbs up pose. Kalpesh Melta, one of the businessmen, has been quoted in Indian media discussing projects with Trump that are underway. If Donald Trump is going to have a scandal-free administration, he is going to want to quickly separate himself from his businesses because the criticism on the right, which would be rightly so that Hillary Clinton, if she became president, would have a conflict of interest with the Clinton Foundation. In the same way that the right would criticize Hillary Clinton is the same way they need to equally criticize Donald Trump for not separating himself from his business because if you're meeting meeting with potential leaders of different countries you're meeting with businessmen while you are the president elect and you're going to control control trade policies you can do things and influence um policy decisions that will also help benefit your business because so it is a very slippery slope there could be a lot of pay to play action god forbid this could be happening in the white house so donald trump needs to work on this in very fast and the people who surround him needs to tell him that he needs to quickly separate himself from his businesses and he, he needs to have his children meeting with businessmen or anyone else so there isn't any conflict of interest and he shouldn't be doing this while he is the president-elect. There was also reports that the same day Donald Trump held the meeting with the businessmen at the Trump International Hotel, which opened last month in Washington, D.C., and it hosted about 100 foreign diplomats for a tour intended to encourage future bookings for the leaders from their country. Some guests won raffle prizes like overnight stays at Trump properties around the world. Some diplomats were reported in saying that spending money at the hotel is an easy, friendly job gesture to Trump, but others worry that doing so could give diplomats the appearance of trying to win favor with the president-elect. Now, this brings me back to my original point. If Republicans and conservatives criticized Hillary Clinton and held her to a high standard, saying that while she was at the State Department, she was selling American diplomacy, American influence to the highest bidder. Donald Trump is now the president-elect, soon to be sworn in in less than 60 days. This raises a lot of questions that he's meeting with businessmen, that he still hasn't separated himself from his businesses, and he will be in control of foreign trade policies, which could possibly impact his businesses at hand. 
Republicans and conservatives need to hold him to a high standard and they need to criticize this as well and need to and he needs to be held accountable and quickly detach himself from his businesses. Because if you are the president and you are meeting with foreign leaders from other countries and you are still entangled into your businesses, this raises a lot of questions. If somebody donates to any of your companies, donates to your foundation the same way um, foreign leaders donated to the Clinton Foundation, you could influence policies that can benefit these people. You can influence trade deals that can help benefit these countries. So we need to hold our politicians to the same standard that we would hold for everyone. Everyone has to have one standard, no matter if you're on the left or the right, conservative or liberal. Everyone has to be held to the same standard. Donald Trump's daughter, Ivanka Trump, who will be taking over running the family's business in January, joined her father at a meeting with Shinzo Abe, the Prime Minister of Japan. Reporters weren't allowed to attend and no summary of the meeting was given. This was Donald Trump's first meeting with a foreign head of state. Donald Trump's top advisor, Kellyanne Conway, described it as much more of an informal meeting with matters of policy left for after the inauguration. Reince Priebus, the chairman of the Republican National Committee and newly appointed chief of staff, attempted to assuage concerns about the ethical implications of the meeting. Priebus, Priebus said, Obviously, we will comply with all of those laws and we will have our White House counsel review all of these things. We will have every I dotted and every T crossed, and I can sh assure the American people that there wouldn't be any wrongdoings or any sort of undue influence over any decision making. Now, this also raises a lot of questions about what role his children will play in the Trump White House. If your children aren't given any s special access, any special clearance, they aren't appointed as special advisors or any advisors in your administration, why are you having informal meetings with foreign heads of state and your children are, pres are present? This should not be acceptable. This should not be allowed. And people need to actively criticize and speak up about this because we wouldn't allow this with Hillary Clinton if this was her in the White House and Republicans and conservatives would rightly criticize her for having Chelsea Clinton, who doesn't have any security access, doesn't have any clearance, sitting in on meetings that her mom is having with foreign heads of state. So conservatives should equally criticize Donald Trump as well as liberals should equally criticize Donald Trump for having meetings and having his daughter present even if it's an informal meeting it's extremely inappropriate to have your child sitting there with you who has no security access who has no special clearance who should not be sitting there and to not have the press there to begin with is very questionable indeed. Even if you have alternative media sites there or if you have one or two newspapers from the um, mainstream press there, it's very odd that you had a sort of off-the-record meeting like this with a foreign head of state and your daughter was present. Now, given the fact that Donald Trump is about to be inaugurated in less than 60 days and he's going to have control over our foreign trade policies it raises a lot of concerns given the fact that he has a lot of businesses overseas and he has a lot of businesses in india donald trump has partnered with indian developers to create more business ventures than in any other foreign nation or territory the Trump Organization has forged deals with leading moguls in India and with billionaire politicians in India as well. One Trump-branded project is currently under investigation for land acquisition irregularities among several projects in India now promoting conflict of interest concerns. The president-elect called India a great country, and he is involved in at least 16 partnerships or corporations there. Those business interests range from financial relationships with the leading member of the governing party, which will be a significant backdrop to Trump's administration policy towards the towards India. 
At an October campaign event with the Indian American community in New Jersey, Trump boasted of his massive and very beautiful development projects in the country and vowed that the relationships between India and the United States would be the best ever. The Trump Organization has had lucrative licensing deals to lend its name to luxury high-rise Trump Tower in Mumbai, a residential project in the smaller city of Pune, a large office and retail complex in the high-tech hub of Gorgon outside the capital, and another residential project and tower in Kolkata. Two Trump businesses associated with the Kolkata project were organized in 2015 after Trump had formally begun his campaign as president. At least 111 Trump companies have done businesses in 18 countries and territories across South America, Asia, and the Middle East. A conservatorium of watchdog groups have raised concerns about potential conflict of interests and called for the president-elect to set up a proper blind trust for his vast empire instead of turning over the day-to-day -day management to his three grown children, as he su suggested he will do. Now, the reason why he will probably not turn his business over into a blind trust is because they don't have to keep Donald Trump's children a part of the company. They can easily fire them, so he probably doesn't want that. But if he is going to turn his business over, as I said, he needs to quickly detach himself from his businesses and hand them over to his children. I know this will take time, but given the fact that he was running his campaign for a year, this should have crossed someone's mind, either Kellyanne Conway, um, Ivanka Trump's um, husband, J um, Jared Kushner, I believe his name is, who are surrounding Trump, who give him sound advice. Somebody should have told him, look, you need to start detaching yourself from your business. And I will definitely keep you guys updated and hold Donald Trump accountable and his feet to the fire for him not following through on what he criticized Hillary Clinton for during the campaign. He needs to actively and quickly detach himself from his businesses right away. I'm the Millennial Revolt. Thank you guys so much for watching and you have a wonderful day.